Hi, thanks for stopping by Oliver Kershaw Photography. Today we're going to be speaking about upgrading our NAS drive. We've got a QNAP drive with high speed Thunderbolt connections to make our editing workflow a lot easier for us. It means we don't need to take the files off the drive, it can all sit on the network attached storage and we can use Thunderbolt to access it really, really quickly. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we've got a little package come from Amazon uh, and this contains an M.2 drive. Uh, so in here, let's have a little look what we've got. We can... Hey, we've got a, a WD Black one terabyte drive. Now we're going to install this into the QNAS uh, and go from there. So we're going to show you what you need to do, how to do it uh, and the setups afterwards as well. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment below, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so it comes down to turning off the NAS, so just press the button and let it shut, shut down. down. But next on the list is disconnecting all of the wires at the back. So we've got everything we need here in order to set up the SSD. I'm not a tech expert, so I'm not really gonna suggest that I am. But what we need to do is put a heat sink on it. So QNAP provide these little heat sinks and it's just gotta go on top of the controller. So peel off the little sticky bit, uh, find the controller, which I believe is this bit here. If not, please let me know in the description, but it just sticks on and that should. So, okay, so now we've unplugged our NAS, what we need to do is take the cover off. So there's one, two, three screws to undo. Okay, so once all the screws are undone, it's a simple case of just lifting the cover off. Pull it forward and lift it off. That's it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to install the our, we're going to install our hard drive just in the back down there. And if I can lift this up just to show you, that's where it goes. So it's tallest. All we need to do is lift up that little clip. We now have two SSDs installed in, as you can see in the back there. Okay, so now we have everything installed, all we're gonna do is put the cover back on to the NAS and reconnect all of the uh, connectors at the back. So first things first, let's put the cover on. Okay, there is a trick to this apparently, you just push it in, make sure the connectors are done at the side and reinstall the screws. Okay, so back at the desk. Now that we've installed everything that we need into our NAS, uh, what we're gonna do is turn it on. And just wait for that boot up sequence to begin. So we're inside our QNAP control panel. Uh, on here we've got several apps. What we wanna do is go into storage and snapshots. Uh, now I've already mounted my QNAP drive in here uh, and we've got both of our SD drive showing up. So what we want to do uh, is have a look at the one that we've just installed, uh, which is our SD drive here. Okay, so it's estimated life 100. Uh, it's all good. It's got a good operating temperature. So what we want to do now is we've already done a test, so we've uh, no errors found on here. We can do a quick check on the disk speed. So what would happen on normal without it? So we've got a write speed of about 300 and a read speed of about 1000. Now, I have this hooked up on a 10 gigabyte ethernet connection. Uh, it will be quick, so let's try and speed that up even more. So if we go into cache acceleration, Okay, we need to add it on. Okay, so we've got our crate 
SSD cache. What we're going to do is configure this now. So what we're going to do is click next. Okay, and select our drive. So we're going to select both drives. Now we've got read only, read and write, or write only performance. Let's go for read and write. Uh, read and write cache can only be created SSD, SSDs further increase performance. Okay, so we're going to go for a little bit of protection on read and write because if we have read and write on, what happens is if one of these fails, you lose the data. So at least this way, it's got a little bit of backup. So that's the reason why we've installed two SSDs. So we shoot a lot of video and media, so we're going to opt for this. We're going to have 10% uh, of over provisioning. Uh, this just allows the drive not to f fill up completely. OK, and then we click Next. And yeah, all of our drives can use that. Perfect. So let's create it. So here we go. We've got some uh, little arrow warnings here. SS the cache creation information. When creating an SSD cache, all of the existing data on the selected SSDs will be erased. That's fine, they're new. Before removing an SSD from the NAS, you must disable and remove the SSD cache function from the administration page and wait for the data to be flushed to the disks. Removing an SSD while the SSD cache is active will lead to data lost, even if it's powered off. Okay. So now we wait and we're initializing. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, so as you can see, that took less than a minute. Um, so we've got two ready. We've got our cache acceleration uh, up and running on a RAID 1 format. So we can see we've got a write 100, read 0. So let's do a little check. So what we can do. There are our previous stats. Let's see what the write is. The write is now 800, so we've doubled our speed, and our read speed is still about 1,000. Now, the main thing is we've increased our write speed there, uh, which is really gonna help when it comes to video. Hi, thanks for sticking by. I hope you enjoyed our instructional video on how to install an SSD into a NAS. Let me know what you think in the comments below and also if you can hit like, hit subscribe uh, to see our next video that's coming up. Our next video that we're going to do is how we back up our photos and video, how we keep them safe for our clients as a wedding photographer, you through our backup process. See you soon.